on Prime Crime. It's going to be a missing person, Lauren Giddings. Investigators' desperate search for answers. You used to watch her come in and out of her apartment, didn't you? No. Now you're lying. Leads to the interrogation of a suspect that just won't break. One word answers, dazed, confused. How can you remember a f statute and you can't remember what you did two f days ago? I don't know. Hi there, everybody. I'm Jesse Weber, and welcome to Prime Crime. This is where we break down the most high profile and memorable true crime cases. As many of you know, we focus heavily on police interrogations. And suspects, well, they act in all kinds of ways. But the person you're about to see being interviewed, he just may be different than all the rest. June 30th, 2011, it's gonna be a missing person. The missing person is Lauren Giddings. Down in Macon, Georgia, police are alerted to a disturbing situation. We had received a call, friends and family, neighbors, that were worried that they hadn't seen her in the last few days. Lauren Giddings was from Maryland and went to college and then law school. She had graduated in May and began studying for the bar. She was a person who had lots of friends. She was very much well-liked. She was a runner. She was an excellent student. The morning that we went out there, we were able to gain access to her apartment, her car was there, her keys were there at the apartment, her pocketbook was there, her cell phone was there, her laptop was there. You were in the graduating class with Lauren. Right. Uh, Giddings, and you knew her, right? Yeah. And y'all live in the same apartment complex. Mm -hmm. She and I would end up together a lot simply because of like, we were going to the same spot after class. Just walking together? Yeah, or like just walking together. During the investigation, several people were interviewed. When was the last time you've actually physically seen her? It would be early Saturday morning. We went out to the bar and she came back to my boyfriend's place to stay for the evening. Did you see Lauren when you woke up that morning? No. It was a mystery because she's not that kind of person that would just go somewhere and not tell somebody where she was. Do you have a key to her apartment or did you know where she hides the key? I knew where she hides the key. And did you go inside her apartment? Yes, last night. And did everything appear to be undisturbed last night? Um, yes. There appeared to be no forced entry. We thought it had to be somebody that either she knew she let in or had a key in a lot of the apartment. I'm asking you for your help. Yes, sir. This is your girlfriend. I understand. I understand. Okay. Because we can't find her. There's people telling me y'all, this relationship is on the rocks or not That's a good relationship. When I felt the pressure of the commitment, I just kind of backed off. But that's Have what I've done been in my life. Violent towards No, her. sir. At one point, Police interview another acquaintance of Lauren Giddings. With me is her next door neighbor who lives in apartment four. Can I get your last name? McDaniel, Stephen McDaniel. They lived next to each other in the same apartment complex. They also attended the same law school. When was the last time you think you seen Lauren? It was either last week or the week before that. I was coming back from bar prep and I was driving back and I saw her going out to run. He and Lauren were both officers in the same social group, uh, which was an organization through the law school. Is there anything that you could tell me today or add to your statement that could help me locate Lauren? I can't think of anything. I mean, we looked around to see if there was a note or if there was anything, but there was just nothing that we could find to try and figure out where she was. However, McDaniel soon goes from just a potential source of information to a person of interest. 
He was arrested and charged with burglary because during the initial investigation, he talked about going into other people's apartments and had taken some things like condoms, and that gave him a reason to hold on to him. But when authorities bring McDaniel back in for more questioning, he acts like a completely different person. I need to know about this girl right here. You know her? Yes. Does she live next door to you? Yes. When's the last time you seen her? Two or three weeks ago. One word answers, dazed, confused, sort of flipping that switch from being, you know, very wordy, very animated, very upbeat in his answers to being kind of catatonic. Just tell me what happened, brother. I don't know. Do you even care that no one can find her? Yes. Earlier today, me and you sit here and talk normal. What's going on with you now? Why are you acting like this? I don't understand. The kind of blank stare, very short answers, didn't really offer a lot of information on his own. I was talking to people that he works with and everything. They talk about how he's very talkative. Didn't they say you're so talkative, buddy? That you're always so friendly, you stop in and say hello, and you talk. Why is it that everything that we get from you is yes, no, or I don't know? I don't know. Everyone was actually very cooperative. I think they began to zero in on Stephen, one, because of the interview that was conducted, and two, initially he would not allow a search of his apartment. McDaniel is acting incredibly peculiar, but is that enough to implicate him in Giddings' disappearance? When we return, the probe into McDaniel intensifies. When you say, I don't know, it casts another cloud over you, and it's raining all over you. How can you remember a statute, and you can't remember what you did two days ago? I think someone took her. How do you think somebody would take her? If somebody did take her. When she was running. It's June 2011 down in Macon, Georgia. Police are interviewing Stephen McDaniel about the sudden disappearance of his fellow law school classmate and neighbor, Lauren Giddings. One particular point of interest is how odd he's behaving in the interrogation room versus when he initially spoke with authorities. You're acting like you don't know what's going on. Why are you shutting down? Why are you not talking to me? I don't know. As investigators speak with McDaniel, they start to get a sense of his odd life. How often do you take a bath? A couple times a week. Just a couple? And I get sweaty. He sort of existed on the margins or the fringes. People thought he was strange. What, do you just stay in the house all day? Yes. I mean, what do you do all day in the house? Play video games. By yourself? Yes. He was more of a recluse, uh, kind of a loner, quiet. You told me about how you like to look at porn on the internet. You expressed to me that you're a virgin, correct? Yes. What happened to Lauren? I don't yeah. know. You like her, don't you? She's my friend. Did you ever think about having sex with her? No. There is reporting that he had actually asked her out and she was trying to be kind and just kind of said, you know, I just want to be friends. You mean to tell me you look at porn on the internet and get off to that, but you never looked at her and said, man, I wonder what it'd be like to have sex with her? No. But let's shift away from McDaniel. Investigators eventually find something that changes the course of this whole case. And what they find is right outside the apartment complex. Myself and some of the other investigators kept noticing just kind of a foul odor. One of our um, investigators opened the trash can, of course it really got strong. He felt the bag down in the trash can. And that's when he discovered what was a uh, human torso. We responded to a missing person call. It was turned over to detectives. They discovered a, a dead body. The body was dismembered. We got the DNA results back. It was the missing person. My first thought was that's somebody's daughter that is no longer with us. And it, it kind of breaks your heart to realize that. Detectives confront McDaniel about the macabre discovery. 
You know there was a body found in the trash can next to the apartments. Yes. Who would do something to somebody and throw them in a trash can? I don't know. This is probably a community dumpster, and it's probably taken out once or twice a week. And I think maybe the person ran out of time, put this in that trash, and figured it would be taken out before anyone would notice. Who do you think it points to? The complete stranger is going to come to her apartment and kill her. They're not going to take the time to dismember her and throw her in the trash can. A specific crime at a specific location. Is it possible that Stephen McDaniel is the one who killed Lauren Giddings? Time to take a closer look at this suspect. When's the last time you've been to Kroger in Baconsfield? I don't remember. When's the last time you were at Walmart? I don't remember. It's been a long time. Can you even give me that much? No. He was not forthcoming with trying to help. So sometimes you then want to focus on those that, that are not uh, forthcoming and authorities focus on his apartment. We found several weapons to be uh, bladed weapons, firearms at Stephen McDaniel's apartment. How many guns did you have in your apartment? Three. And then you had that samurai sword? Yes. Did you have any other knives in the house? Yes. We also found some child pornography on one of the jump drives. It was probably one of the hardest things to see in my law enforcement career. What do you need all these weapons for? To have. Why? There's a reason why. Were you molested as a child? No. When we return, detectives crank up the heat on McDaniel. I don't know. Yes, you do know. And everybody in Macon knows you knows because you got your sorry ass on the news and told everybody. Why would you not be honest with me? I am being honest. Stephen, it just doesn't feel like it, buddy. This is Stephen McDaniel, a 26-year-old law school graduate who investigators believe may be behind the death of 27-year-old Lauren Giddings, McDaniel's classmate and neighbor. After finding Giddings' torso in the dumpster outside her apartment building, authorities are trying to get any answers out of McDaniel, but they aren't making much progress. What do I need to tell her family? I don't know. That's what you want me to tell her mother and her father, is that you don't know. I don't know. And suspicious circumstantial evidence begins to build around him. You smell like you've been cleaning up, like you've been using cleaner to clean up. You've been using some kind of cleaner to clean up your apartment, haven't you? No. He did have a scratch on his chest right below his sternum that night that he told me was a spider bite. Well, it didn't look like a spider bite to me. With law enforcement not getting very far with McDaniel, that's when they decide to turn things up. Not that you're sorry that she's missing. Not that you've been trying to help me all day find her, but you just wanted me to tell her I don't know. I don't know. Are you a sorry is. piece of that you want me to tell her that? There was one thing in particular that McDaniel did early on when Lauren disappeared that really struck a nerve with investigators. You got your ass on that news and stood out there and gave a media report that her mother saw about her missing daughter. And you want me to sit there and tell them that you don't know. This was a crime scene that the media really descended on. And so there were a lot of news stations, news channels there, interviewed people, and they came across Stephen McDaniel. You're all over the news. You sure stood out there and ran your mouth to the news media. But now you're going to get out here and you don't know. You know you're just a sorry piece of that don't give a Right? No. His interrogation didn't really have much of a good cop, bad cop situation. Um, they came in hot. They came in pretty strong for him. Where's that little girl, Steven? I don't know. Steven, you know. Where? I don't know. Steven. You're going to look at this right here, this little girl right here, and you're going to say you don't know? I know you know. I don't. They made it very clear that he was their suspect, and they weren't here to kind of 
broach any relationship with him. You went into her apartment, Stephen, and you hurt that girl. No, I didn't. You did, buddy. Why won't you tell me, Stephen? I didn't do it. I'm gonna take this from me. You don't deserve to look at it. I appreciate all your cooperation tonight, okay? Okay. Detectives believe McDaniel killed Giddings, but he's not giving in at all. He may be acting strange, but do authorities have enough to prove he committed a murder? Up next, the incredible revelations in the Stephen McDaniel case. Luminol was sprayed on the walls and in the bathtub of all the apartments. In Lawrence's bathroom, it was everywhere. I didn't do anything. Too much evidence. Too much evidence. You're not going to win. 2011, Macon, Georgia. Investigators set their sights on a man named Stephen McDaniel, who they suspect killed and dismembered his law school classmate and neighbor, Lauren Giddings, her torso found in a dumpster outside her apartment. As they question him in a bizarre series of interviews, they do a deep dive into his past. One of the things that Mr. McDaniel was always wanting to talk to people about was committing the perfect murder. He would ask that question to people, and then he would stop them and tell them, say, no, you're wrong, let me tell you why. And then he would go into his idea of a perfect murder. You know what he said? He said, he's a crazy <laughs> That's your own family calling you crazy. And that's when the evidence stacks up against the suspected killer. The GBI had found a video that he had taken of surveilling her apartment, looking in the window. He jerry-rig a camera on a pole and, you know, record. He was stalking her. We know that he probably had some kind of an obsession with her. You used to watch her come in and out of her apartment, didn't you? No. Didn't you just tell me that y'all were friends? Yes. But you don't, you didn't pay attention to when she came in and out? No. Steven, you're lying. Now you're lying. We found a pair of her uh, underwear in this apartment that did have DNA on it that was her DNA. Today you told an investigator that you were worried about us possibly finding blood in your apartment. Now why would you be worried about that? We all looked in Lauren's apartment. Did you see blood? No. When you spray this chemical, if there's any trace of blood, it picks up on it, gives a glow. Her apartment uh, in the bathroom kind of lit up like a Christmas tree. You could see some marks on the tub itself that were cuts into little striations into the enamel. It gave you a good indication that that's probably where she was dismembered. You know that blood was there, and that's why you're worried about it. No. A hacksaw was found in the maintenance shed, which was locked off with a key that we later found in Stephen McDaniel's apartment. That hacksaw that we found did have Lauren's DNA, blood, and tissue on that. We also found packaging where it was bought, and we found receipts where it was bought from Walmart. It was the same package in Stephen McDaniel's apartment. We know what you did to her. I didn't do anything. Well, that's what you say. But we know different, so you f***ed either way. There'll be no more video games. This is the end. I didn't do anything. We know you killed her. We know you put her body in the trash can. So you can sit there with that dumb look on your face. But it's over. Stephen McDaniel is officially charged with the murder of Lauren Giddings. Hey, Stephen, how are you, buddy? All right. Let me ask a few more questions. I have nothing to say without my attorney. You don't want to hear what we have? No. All right. I want my attorney. But McDaniel's criminal case didn't last long. He ended up pleading guilty to murdering Lauren Giddings. 
in my opinion, I think what led to that was the video itself. His defense team, once they saw and knew about the video, they felt that that was maybe in Mr. McDaniel's best interest to make a plea on the case. McDaniel also wrote out a detailed confession, explaining how he snuck into Lauren's apartment in the early morning hours of June 26, 2011, watched her as she slept, and when she awoke, he strangled her to death and then proceeded to dismember her later that day. He did admit to cutting off her fingers and flushing them down the toilet because she had scratched him that night. He said the rest of her body parts he had thrown in trash dumpsters around that area. I think he tried to make it look like he gave her a fighting chance. He was able to get on top of her and choke her for 15 minutes. I don't see him having the physical strength to do anything for 15 minutes. I think he was trying to make himself look stronger than he was. Stephen McDaniel was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in 2041. I'm just glad that we were able to solve the case, able to bring some closure and some justice to Lauren and her family and put Mr. McDaniel where he needs to be so that he can't harm anyone else. Thought you were smarter than everybody. But you up. Somebody always leaves something in a crime scene. You up. Truly, this is a disturbing case. And it is so hard to think about what happened to Lauren Giddings. As for Stephen McDaniel, he spent the last several years fighting to throw out his guilty plea and conviction, arguing that he had bad lawyers and prosecutors used improper evidence. But at the time of this recording, court after court has rejected his appeals. That's all we have for you here on Prime Crime. Thanks so much for joining us, and until next time, stay safe.